In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we come to the altar of God here at church, to the altar of our hearts at home, we acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O oh God, who manifests your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to Moses. Taking some of the spirit that was on Moses, the Lord bestowed it on the 70 elders. And as the spirit came to rest on them, they prophesied. Now two men, one named Eldad and the other Medad, were not in the gathering, but had been left in the camp. They too had been on the list, but had not gone out to the tent. Yet the Spirit came to rest upon them also, and they prophesied in the camp. So when a young man quickly told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp, Joshua, son of Nun, who from his youth had been Moses' aide, said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses answered him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the people of the Lord were prophets. Would that the Lord might bestow his Spirit on them all. The word of the Lord. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. Though your servant is careful of them, very diligent in keeping them, yet who can detect failings? Cleanse me from my unknown faults. 
the precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. From want and sin especially restrain your servant, let it not rule over me. Then shall I be blameless and innocent of serious sin. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. A reading from the letter of St. James. Come now, you rich, weep and wail over your impending miseries. Your wealth has rotted away. Your clothes have become moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have corroded, and that corrosion will be a testimony against you. It will devour your flesh like a fire. You have stored up treasure for the last days. Behold, the wages you withheld from the workers who harvested your fields are crying aloud, and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on earth in luxury and pleasure. You have fattened your hearts for the day of slaughter. You have condemned, you have murdered the righteous one. He offers you no resistance. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Your word, O Lord, is truth. Consecrate us in the truth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. At that time, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us. Jesus replied, do not prevent him. There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me, for whoever is not against us is for us. Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, It would be better for him if a great millstone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed than with two hands to go into Gehenna, into the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than with two feet to be thrown into Gehenna. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into Gehenna, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. The Gospel of the Lord. You open up the gift box and there inside, carefully cushioned in a nest of of golden foil, is an assortment of chocolate. 24 gems of sweet deliciousness. Little squares of chocolate toffee, rounded buttons of chocolatey salted caramel. Blocks of raspberry cream dripped in rippling chocolate peanut clusters with a little curly cue on top. Cherry cordials, coconut delights, creme brulee and a chocolate shell. A single bar of plain chocolate would be wonderful enough, so an assortment just makes it all the more wonderful. And maybe this is how Jesus was hoping the apostles would see his flock as an assortment, as a variety, as variations on a theme of Christian discipleship, as something to delight him rather than as something to get upset about when somebody's not uh, following uh, in line. Jesus seems to have tried to broaden their concept of exactly what his church would look like. It would be Catholic and it would absorb lots of different flavors wherever it happened to be found in the world. And if we take even just a superficial look at the Lord's flock around the world, that's exactly what we see. The Catholic Church isn't just a single bar of plain chocolate. It's actually made up of 24 different churches. It's an assortment. 
And those 24 churches around the world follow one of six different rites. There's the Latin rite, which we follow. There's the Alexandrian rite, based in uh, northeastern Africa, Egypt, Ethiopia. There's the Antiochian rite, rooted in around Syria. The Armenian rite, based in Western Asia and Lebanon. The Chaldean rite in the Middle East and India. And the Byzantine rite around the area of Turkey and Greece. And that's just where these various rites are headquartered. These, these different rites and churches are found all over the world. The Lord's flock is an incredible assortment of people. And that's just among the Catholics. You know, then we have to add in all the Protestant denominations and Eastern churches. So you can see why Jesus said to John and the apostles, do not prevent that other person. Do not prevent them. There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Uh, it's also why in the Gospel of John, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know mine and mine know me. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead and they will hear my voice and there will be one flock, one shepherd. Uh, you know, it's oftentimes said that God is an artist, and that seems like an appropriate description. Uh, God doesn't crank out disciples from a factory. God is more like an artisan, more like a craftsman. He makes disciples one at a time, uh, each with his or her own unique qualities, though all of them are Christian. But with this variety of people within the Lord's flock, it also takes the variety of people to help lead and to shepherd uh, that flock in Christ's name. And maybe that's the reason why Jesus chose 12 such different people to be his apostles. The apostles were brothers, they were strangers, they were fishermen, tax collector, political zealots, a murderer in St. Paul. They were well liked, they were despised, married, single, outspoken, quiet, affluent, poor, skeptical wide-eyed. They were men, but the term apostles also applied to women like Mary Magdalene, the apostle to the apostles, and the Virgin Mary, whose overarching uh, apostolic message is always, do whatever my son tells you. It takes a variety of people to help lead and shepherd the variety of people who make up the Lord's flock. But this assortment of people um, Jesus put into positions of leadership isn't just a bit of historical trivia. Uh, it happens still today, out of necessity. Even today, the people whom God is uh, drawing to himself come from so many different backgrounds, languages, traditions. And shepherds and leaders in the church need to be able to meet that need, which is no easy task. Now today in the United States, uh, Catholics observe Priesthood Sunday. It's a day to highlight vocations to the priesthood. But this focus on vocations isn't about you know, filling spots in parishes uh, that don't have a resident priest so that we can sort of get by. It's about us helping God to inspire a variety of men to consider priesthood so that the entire flock can thrive. You know, back about 60, 70 years ago, it wasn't uncommon for a parish to have at least a couple of priests. Uh, there were parishes that even had a few priests. And that was a real blessing because then each priest could bring something different to the parish. You know, one priest might be really gifted in pastoral ministry, another might be a great catechist, um, another priest in the parish might have a passion for liturgy and the arts, and yet another priest might have a great sense of humor uh, and could play kickball, kickball very well uh, with the kids at school. And together as a group, as a, as a, as a very group, uh, they shepherd the, shepherded the people and enriched the people through their variety. Today, however, of course, a parish is, is lo as lucky if it even has one priest, and a priest is lucky if he has just one parish. And so on this Priesthood Sunday, we especially want to ask the Lord for an increase of vocations to the priesthood, not just to fill spots in parishes, but to meet the needs of the variety of people who make up the Lord's flock. God's people, the church, is a wonderful assortment we hope and we pray for an equally wonderful assortment of priests and leaders to help us all along the way to heaven.
we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And let us pray. For the church around the world, that in the midst of our differing cultures, languages, and traditions, we will support each other as brothers and sisters in the one Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For our country and all nations of the world, that the Holy Spirit would guide those who are given authority and bring us to peace, let us pray to the Lord. For those in need of God's healing grace, including Jeannie, Bonnie, Bill, Kevin, Mary, those on our prayer chain, for ourselves, and those we hold in thought in prayer, let us pray to the Lord. For our vocations to the priesthood from our parish and diocese and across the country, that the needs of the Lord's flock might be more fully tended to, let us pray to the Lord. For the prayers written in our parish books of prayer and for the prayers we offer to the Lord from the altar of our hearts today. Let us pray to the Lord. For the family and friends of St. Clair Parish for whom this Mass is offered, and for all those who have fallen asleep in Christ, may they pass through the gates of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord our God, we ask you in your kindness to hear our prayers and in your mercy to answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and by the power of the Holy Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity 
made the body of Christ in the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying... Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.